Hello friends, welcome to Digital Chemistry. Today's topic is Vapor Pressure. Let's start understanding the vapor pressure with the help of animation. Consider a liquid in a closed container. Initially, the liquid is changing into the gaseous state and we know that the evaporation is the change of the liquid into the gaseous state. Here this red circle representing the change of the liquid into the gaseous state means here the evaporation process starts. At the beginning the rate of the evaporation will be fast whereas no condensation. As you can see here in the second diagram that the rate of evaporation is greater as compared to the rate of condensation. And we know that the evaporation is the change of the liquid into the gaseous state representing by the red circles whereas the condensation is the change of the gases into the liquid state that is represented by the purple circles. But with the passage of time the rate of evaporation will become slow and slow while the condensation rate becomes fast and fast and ultimately the two rates becomes equal as shown in the third diagram. Here the rate of the evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation as you can see here in the diagrams that the liquid changing into the vapor state or the gaseous state is equal to the gases changes into the liquid state. So here the dynamic equilibrium is established between the liquid and its vapors. So at this stage the pressure exerted by the vapors at equilibrium on the liquid surface is called the vapor pressure. So vapor pressure is the pressure of the vapor present at equilibrium in a closed container is called the vapor pressure of the liquid or the pressure of the vapors when a liquid and its vapors are in state of dynamic equilibrium is called the vapor pressure. Remember that here the rate of the evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation means that the liquid changing into the gaseous state is equal to the gases changing into the liquid state. It means that there is a dynamic equilibrium between the liquid and its vapors. Factors affecting vapor pressure. The first factor that affects the vapor pressure is the force of attraction or the intermolecular forces. Remember that the vapor pressure depends upon the nature of the liquid. Different liquids have different intermolecular forces. Remember that the liquid having the stronger intermolecular forces show the low vapor pressures. For example, water. Whereas the liquid having the weak intermolecular forces or weaker force of attraction show the high vapor pressure rate. For example, ether. Do you know that why water is non-volatile and ether is volatile in nature? Because water has strong hydrogen bonding whereas the ether has weak London forces. So the intermolecular forces in water are stronger, therefore its vapor pressure is lower than ether. Second factor that affect the vapor pressure is the temperature. Remember that the temperature is directly proportional to the vapor pressure. It means that with the increase of the temperature, the vapor pressure increases and with the decrease of the temperature, the vapor pressure rate decreases. Why this happens? Because with the increase of the temperature, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases and more molecules overcomes the force of attraction and change from the liquid to the gaseous state. So increasing the rate of the evaporation and the condensation. So as a result of this, the vapor pressure rate increases with the increase of the temperature. Measurement of the vapor pressure. Vapor pressure of the liquids can be measured by two methods. First is the barometric method and the second is the monometric method. Let's discuss about the first method that is the barometric method.
In this method, a dish is filled with mercury is taken and the barometric tube is also filled with mercury is inverted into a dish. Height of the mercury column is noted. Now, one or two drops of the test liquid are introduced into the barometric tube through its lower end by the help of the dropper. The liquid rises above the surface of the mercury. A part of the liquid vaporizes. Due to the pressure exerted by the vapors, height of the mercury columns falls. And when becomes constant, it is noted. The difference of the height gives the vapor pressure. Although this method is very convenient, but it is not much accurate. Second method for the measurement of the vapor pressure is the manometric method. This method is comparatively accurate. The test liquid is taken in the round bottom flask. A T-shaped tube is attached to it whose one end is connected to a vacuum pump and the other end is connected to a monometer. The liquid is boiled to remove the dissolved air in it. The liquid is then frozen and the air on it is removed by the vacuum pump. Liquid is again boiled to remove more air and is again frozen. The air on it will be removed by the vacuum pump. This procedure is repeated again and again to remove the maximum air dissolved in the liquid. Now the flask is placed in a thermostat and the desired temperature is set. The vapors of the liquid are allowed to enter into the manometer by opening the stopper. The mercury column in the manometer facing the vapors is depressed while that facing the atmospheric pressure rises. The difference in the heights of the mercury columns noted from which the vapor pressure is determined. Please like, share and subscribe. Digital Chemistry